So, ladies and gentlemen, what I have is 12 divided by 8 um, is going to equal x squared minus 4x plus, oh, no, what do I know? We're trying to prepare us for multiplying and dividing rational fractions. Before we can do that, we need to go back and review simplifying, all right? So before we get into this, let's go back and do a fraction. Let's pretend in this class, I gave you guys, or you received an answer on a test, and it was 12 over 8. Now, would you want to write 12 over 8 as your final answer, Daniel? No. No, that probably wouldn't be a good idea, but your initial response, yes, would probably mean that you get a rough marker on for what you're doing. So, yeah, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to leave this in because we're taught, or we try to teach you guys to go always write things in their simplest form. And is 12 divided by 8 written in its simplest form? Is 12 divided by 8 written no. in its simplest form? No. So what have, we, what have we previously learned that we can do with 12 divided by 8 to simplify it? One and a half. But what am I doing, though, before I get to that answer? Like, how am I getting it? Simplifying. So how am I simplifying? So how am I reducing it? OK. Yeah, you're taking out what they have in common, right? We know that the top and the bottom both share a 4. So what we're doing is we're essentially dividing out its common factor. Since they both can be divided by 4, we get an answer of 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. The other way I want you guys to look at this is let's say I wrote 12 over 8 equals 4 times 3 <coughs> over 4 times 2. This is just another way to look at it. Does everybody agree with that? Does everybody agree 12 divided by 8 is the same thing as 4 times 3 is the same thing as 4 times 2, right? Yes. Does everybody agree then that 4 divided by 4 is 1 and we're just going to leave our answer as 3 times 2? Does everybody agree with that? Sure. Okay. Good. Now, let's get to the deeper issue. What about if I, if I gave an answer of x squared minus 4x plus 3? divided by x minus 3. Does every single term share a common factor like in our previous example? No. 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 Do they share anything in common? No. Well, it's kind of difficult right now, right? This, you kind of work with numbers, and it's a little bit easier. But here, we're working with polynomials and monomials, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to figure this out. So, Ronnie, I'm going to ask you a question. I want to see if you can answer it. When I rewrite 12 as 4 times 3, do you remember what the name of that process is? Yes. What is factoring? Factoring is taking a number and rewriting it as a product, right? So, yes. So I, I took 8 and I factored 8. I took 12 and I factored 12. However, is 4 times 3 the only way to factor 12? No, but I factored it in a way that the 4's would divide into 1, right? So, let's look at this. Is this factorable, x minus 3? Can I factor this any further? Can I rewrite x minus 3 as a product of two numbers other than itself and 1? No. <coughs> so, that equals x minus 3. How about x squared minus 4x plus 3? Is that factorable? Does everybody know what that is factored? Yes. Yes, very good. So now, since I have it factored, do you guys now see what I can divide out to equal 1? Wait, why do you do x minus 1? Because this times this equals that when you do FOIL. Oh, oh, we're doing that. Okay. okay. So now, you guys can see that, oh, x minus 3 divided by x minus 3, that just equals 1. So the final answer is x minus 1. The exact same way that 4 divided by 4 equals 1 just equals your 3 halves. Isn't that cool? No, not cool. Oh, yeah. All right, so here's, here's your choice.